In this video about Microsoft Excel, we will look at tips for formatting text in titles, column headers, and paragraphs. We will cover keyboard shortcuts, such as using F2 to edit a cell, how to insert a line break inside a cell, merging and wrapping text, formatting different parts of text within the same cell, and how to navigate in a cell that contains a lot of text. Okay, this is the worksheet that we are going to work with. And I'm going to start off by showing you two keyboard shortcuts. The first one is something you can use instead of double clicking in the cell in order to be able to type in it. You could also, once the cell is selected, press the F2 key. And that gives you a cursor in the cell. The second shortcut I wanted to show you that I use a lot is if you want to enter a hard return within a cell. So let's say I wanted the word earnings to be on a line by itself. If I just press the enter key, then I'll end up on the cell below. So instead, position the cursor where you want the hard return to appear, press and hold the alt key, and then press enter. Let's do that on the next column header, F2, arrow keys, press and hold the alt key while you press enter. When you do this, you will notice that you will sometimes end up with an extra space that you don't want, and I will usually delete this. That way the text is centered correctly. I added a hard return to the last column, and I'm setting the alignment for all three column headers to be top align. When you are working in one cell, you can also select by swiping your mouse just part of the text in the cell, and then format that a different way. Having the main title for each column on its own line helps the reader to see that, okay, these are earnings, expenses, and net profit. Now let's say that we want these months to be spelled out instead of abbreviated. I'm going to copy them to another column just to preserve what it was originally. And in the first row, type January spelled out. And I will zoom in so that we can see when you have a cell selected, You'll notice there will be a small square in the bottom right hand corner. If you hover your mouse over that square, don't click on it, just hover the mouse. It will turn into a black cross shape. And at that point, click with the left mouse button and drag your mouse in the direction that you want to go. And you can either go vertically or horizontally. And you'll notice that out to the right, there will be some hover text, and that shows you how the cells are going to be filled in. February, March, April, and so on. This autofill feature works whenever Excel can recognize a pattern. So it works for months, and it works for days of the week as well. It also recognizes whether you want to use abbreviations or the full word. And it works for numbers, but with numbers you will need to enter at least two numbers so that there is a pattern. If I just enter the number one, then I'll end up with a lot of ones. But if I enter one, two, it will fill in three, four, five, six. I can also enter five, 10. And again, I'm selecting these two cells and then hovering over the bottom right hand corner until the mouse turns into a black cross shape Click with the left mouse button and dragging down. Now let's format the report title so that it is only as wide as the table and it does not extend beyond that. So let me click in cell D4, which appears along the formula bar. When I do that, you'll see that all of the text is contained in D4. If I click in the next cell over, E4 is completely blank. And so even if I select the cells going across and click on wrap text, all the text will be wrapped within D4 because that's where it is contained. So I'm going to undo that. And with these four columns still selected, I'll click on merge and center first. This merges these four cells into one cell and it also goes ahead and centers it. And now that we have one wide cell to work with, I can click on wrap text and see the result that I want. It can be helpful when you're working in a large cell like this that's been merged to know how to navigate within the cell. It actually works in the same way that you navigate within a workbook. 
So if I'm over here and I would like to move to this cell at the very beginning, I can click there with my mouse or I can simply press home. And if I want to move to the very top of the workbook, I will hold the control key down while I press home. And to go to the very end of the workbook, again, hold the control key down and press end. So when I want to navigate within a cell, I can use those same commands. First, I'll press F2, which activates the cell and puts the cursor at the very end. If I want it to go to the beginning of this line, I will press home. And to go to the very beginning of the text, control home. And then to the very end again, control end. Let's enter some hard returns by using the Alt Enter command. As we saw with the column headings, text within one cell can be formatted in different ways. So for example, I could select the words net profit and give them a different color and even a larger size. One formatting, however, that you cannot apply to just part of the cell is the highlighting. The entire cell has to be highlighted or not. And if you want to add extra spacing in between the lines, you can do this. I'm using alignment. So I'll go to the home ribbon and then click on the small arrow alignment section called alignment settings. Make sure you're on the alignment tab and then change the vertical alignment to be distributed. Click OK. When you do this, as you change the cell height, you'll see that the text will begin at the very top of the cell and end at the very bottom of the cell. And then the text in the middle is distributed evenly in between. Now suppose we want to add a dash in front of each one of these descriptions of expenses to make it look like a bulleted list. I'll double click, press home to go to the beginning of the line and then enter a dash in a space. When I do this, I receive an error. I look in the formula bar, which shows me the contents of the cell. I see that Excel has inserted an equal sign and then a dash and then cost of goods. That's because any cell contents that begin with a dash, which is recognized as a minus sign or a plus or an equal sign, Excel recognizes as a formula. If I type equals two plus three, then the results of the formula five are displayed. If I, on, I want to actually show the formula equals two plus three, I can double click in the cell and at the very beginning enter an apostrophe or a single quote. This lets Excel know to treat the equal sign as normal text. Now I will go to this text, delete the equal sign Excel had inserted and type a single quotation mark or apostrophe. And by the way, if you ever want to use a single quote as a single quote, the single quote at the beginning of the text will not show up just as it does not show up here. And so the trick to this is to just add another single quote. Let's now look at how to navigate and select text within a paragraph. And to do this, I'm going to go to Microsoft Word because it works the same way in Word. And then we'll go back to Excel and I'll show you what I mean. So here in Word, if we want to move one character at a time, we can do this by pressing the left and right arrow keys, and then we can press the up and down arrow keys to move from line to line. You can also press and hold the control key while I press the arrow keys, and that will move from word to word. And when it comes to selecting text, I can of course do that with the mouse, but another way to do it is to press and hold the shift key again while you press the arrow keys. I can press the down arrow and also go in the opposite direction with the left arrow and the up arrow. Now back in Excel, I can press and hold the control key while I press the right arrow to move from word to word. And then let go of the control key, press and hold the shift key and select the words that I want. I find that I can select the words with more precision using the shift key than with the mouse. And once you have text selected, you can, of course, copy it. 
and paste it into another cell that contains text. The last thing I wanted to mention is that when all else fails and you are trying to insert text somehow onto a report, but there's not a combination of rows and columns that is working for you, you can always insert a text box. And that's found on the insert ribbon. Insert a text box. I will click the left mouse button and just draw the box where I want it to be. And type the text that you want. You can add formatting and you can remove the border by right clicking on the box, selecting format shape, and then on the right hand panel under shape options, go to line and select no line. Nice thing about a text box is that you can move it wherever you want and it can even overlap other sections of the report. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And if you enjoy learning about working with data, please consider subscribing to this channel.